organizations that collect or manage data and individuals who own it, private data and the security of that data should not be taken lightly. There are primary concerns when undertaking the process of protecting fundamentally sensitive information, such as identities, finances, and health records. Without them, cyber criminals and other malicious actors would have access to staggering amounts of potentially damaging data. However, not everyone recognizes or understands the difference between data privacy and security. As a result, the terms are often used incorrectly or confused as the same thing. So, what are data privacy and security? The difference between privacy and security comes down to which data is being protected, how it's being protected, from whom it's being protected, and who is responsible for that protection. Security is all about protecting data from malicious threats, whereas privacy is about using that data responsibly. Obviously, data security is concerned with securing sensitive data. Where data privacy and security begin to differ is in whom or what they are protecting data from. Data security is primarily focused on preventing unauthorized access to data via breaches or leaks, regardless of who the unauthorized party is. To achieve this, organizations use tools and technologies such as firewalls, user authentication, network limitations, and internal security practices to deter such access. This also includes security technologies such as tokenization and encryption to further protect data by rendering it unreadable, which, in the instance that a data breach occurs, can thwart cyber criminals from potentially exposing massive volumes of sensitive data. Privacy, however, is concerned with ensuring that the sensitive data an organization processes, stores, or transmits is ingested compliantly and with consent from the owner of that sensitive data. This means informing individuals upfront of which types of data will be collected, for what purpose and with whom it will be shared. Once this transparency is provided, an individual then must agree to the terms of use, allowing the organization ingesting data to use it in line with its stated purposes. So, privacy is less about protecting data from malicious threats than it is about using it responsibly and in accordance with the wishes of customers and users to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. But that doesn't mean it can't also include security type measures to ensure privacy is protected. For instance, efforts to prevent the linking of sensitive data to its data subject or natural person, such as de-identifying personal data or storing it in different places to reduce the likelihood of re-identification or other common privacy provisions. Too often, the terms security and privacy are used interchangeably, but you can see that they are in fact different, although sometimes difficult to distinguish between. Whereas security controls can be met without also satisfying privacy considerations, privacy concerns are impossible to address without first employing effective security practices. In other words, privacy limits access, whereas security is the process or application for limiting that access. Put yet another way, security protects data and privacy protects identity. Let's look at a hypothetical example of these concepts. When you download a mobile application on your smartphone, you're probably prompted with a privacy agreement that you must consent to before the installation begins. From there, the app might ask you for access to certain information stored on your phone, such as your contacts, location data, or photos. Once you've decided to grant the app these permissions, it is then responsible for securing your data and protecting the privacy of that data, which doesn't always happen. If, for example, the developer of that app turned around and sold the information you gave it to a third party or marketing company without your permission, that would be a violation of your privacy. If the app maker were to suffer a breach exposing your information to cyber criminals, that would be another violation of your privacy but it would also be a security failure. In both instances, the developer failed to protect your privacy. Now that you have a basic understanding of the difference between data privacy and security, let's look at a few common regulations designed to help provide guidelines for maintaining each of them and how they form the data protection landscape.
The Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard is a set of rules for protecting sensitive payment card information and cardholder data. Although primarily concerned with standardizing the security controls for the processing, storage, and transmission of payment data, it also includes measures for personal information often associated with payments, such as names and addresses. It applies to banks, merchants, third parties, and all other entities that handle cardholder data from the major payment card brands. The European Union's General Data Protection Regulation is an international standard for protecting the privacy of EU citizens. This law establishes important terms and definitions for whose data should be protected, what types of data that entails, and how that data should be managed and secured. Any entity that collects the data of EU citizens is subject to this regulation. The California Consumer Privacy Act is the benchmark United States law regulating how organizations are allowed to process the data of California citizens in their households. Similar to the GDPR, it documents which data is protected and details the requirements for protecting that data. All organizations that handle data from Californians must adhere to the statute. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act is concerned with protecting the sensitive health information of patients across the U.S. This regulation is particularly complex because of the vast amount and variety of healthcare data available. Everything from a patient's date of birth to its prescribed medication and x-rays. It also exists in both physical and digital forms that need to be protected differently, which makes securing private health information impossible to achieve with a one-size-fits-all approach. Although it is important to meet the requirements of each regulation relevant to your organization in order to avoid fines and other costly penalties, it is also worth noting that satisfying minimum compliance obligations does not always result in adequate security or privacy measures. By prioritizing the implementation of effective data privacy and security controls, rather than just simply meeting minimum regulatory requirements, organizations will often exceed those same obligations while also improving their security standing and better positioning themselves to anticipate future regulations. Tokenization provides an effective method for doing just that. One of the unique things about tokenization and one of its greatest strengths is its potential to satisfy both data privacy and security concerns. Through its ability to anonymize information, tokenization can act as a security failsafe to protect sensitive data in the event of a breach, rendering the data stored in the breach system unreadable to cyber criminals. In effect, anonymization desensitizes data by de-identifying it and preventing it from being returned to its original sensitive form. Because tokenization removes sensitive data from internal systems, it can virtually eliminate the risk of data theft, making it a particularly useful tool for risk reduction and compliance in terms of both data privacy and security considerations. So even if the security systems established to protect data privacy become compromised, the privacy of that sensitive information does not. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more, check out our website at www.chelseacybersecurity.com. Stay safe out there.